Incredible news today as it is official. FIFA has approved the one-time switch for Folar and Balogun, switching his allegiance from the England as another 21 to the United States of America. I think all of us here in this space are little... Uh, <laughs> our little soccer echo chamber felt this was going to happen, but until it was official, we didn't want to count the chickens, right? It, it, it was all pointing in this direction. Even his mother was quoted and said, what took you so long? So she knew this was on the cards, but if you looked at what was happening with the other countries that he could represent, Nigeria, we don't really know if they made an approach. It's also certainly worth saying that Nigeria, he isn't going to be the number one guy, probably not the number two guy. He wasn't going to be one or two in England who said they were interested, but they have to do it their way. He as a young player has to come through the ranks, which is perfectly normal. And England doesn't really have to explain itself to anyone because, hey, England is an elite power. We are not. Neither is Nigeria. So if Gareth Southgate goes, he has to go through the right processes. So be it. And we thank England, because that certainly helped facilitate it. I mean, just sensical here. Folar and Balogun has to see this in a way that this really was the only choice. You know, in 2026, he is going to be 24. Still young as a player, but you want to... You, you know 2026 is big for you if you're 24. You have to play in a World Cup. Uh, it's certainly feature if you want to be elite. He's going to get all of that. Although part of the things we're going to discuss here, you just don't give him the nine shirt. Well, you do give him the nine shirt, but uh, you rally around those other guys too. Because even though this has been a massive need, the biggest need for the United States, who what, scored three goals at the World Cup? Defensively, tough to break down, just can't score goals. Is that systematic? Is that systemic, part of me? Yes, perhaps. But also the guys aren't getting good chances. Uh, you would hope to think Folar and Balogun, who is via the metrics, one is the best American striker and one of the best in the world. Top 10, 15, when you look at shots, shots on target, the fact that he has 19 goals in a very competitive league in France. He's cooled off a bit on the back end here, but he was right there with Kylian Mbappe for the majority of the season. That this is the guy that you have been courting and you have won. So today on the Soccer OG, didn't record a, didn't record a video over the weekend. I must have known something like this was gonna happen. I, I waited for a reason. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. The latest one with Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. We will talk about the development of young players through Major League Soccer, how you might be seeing a lot of the 2026 World Cup team playing in MLS now or have seen them play. Uh, several topics uh, on the European front, a lot to discuss there. And check out the entire library. Also, like and subscribe us right here. Hit that like button. Hit it. Hit it with conviction. Thumbs up, city. Falar and Balogun. We've done videos on him on the past, so where were we? we? We know the talent is there. Let's figure out how it got to this. Now, the courting process was going on for some time obviously, but this is the latest success story for the United States men's national team when it comes to dual nationals. They have hit almost every one of their targets. I mean, going back to Ricardo Pepe, he signed on, Serginho Dest, Yunus Musa, which I, I was more excited about Musa because that felt like, and remember Gareth Southgate during the World Cup talking about Greg Berhalter, he goes, he already got one from me. Well, now he's gotten two. Uh, I, I got the feeling that Southgate wanted Musa. Musa had a better chance to play for England maybe than uh, Balogun. So uh, I was more excited there because we felt this was going to happen. But this is so exciting. I have to pinch myself. I can't believe it. Alejandro Zendejas, one after the other. Uh, some other guys to a less, you know, Taylor Booth or Johnny Cardoso that could have played. There was no way they were going to play for the other country. The U.S. was their best route, as was the case for Balogun here. So, but the U.S. are hitting, you know, this was a flaw for the United States in the past. We were losing players mainly to Mexico in the competition for dual nationals. We're winning all of them. Brandon Vasquez, we're winning all of them. We are. And we've distanced ourselves from Mexico. We, sorry. So uh, this is a huge, whatever the United States, and we know they're doing a lot of things incorrectly, but this part of it, however they court the players, however they connect with the players has worked. You probably don't want to give Greg Berhalter credit, but he has overseen all of that. 
right? And some people want to give Anthony Hudson. He has to give some credit, right? Because he was overseeing this team when it was happening. This is how I believe in situations like this. If you were in charge of an entity or if you were in the leadership position and those good things happened under your watch, you get credit. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's go back to the uh, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Sorry, Osama bin Laden. The Bush uh, presidency chased him and chased him. Couldn't find him. Barack Obama found him and took care of the problem. So Barack Obama gets credit for eliminating Osama bin Laden, even though the Bush administration put all that stuff into power. Obama gets credit for that. I know these are not the best uh, analogies, but I, I think it kind of works. So Anthony Hudson, and to a lesser degree, Greg Berhalter gets the credit here. They have a connection with the players. Whatever apparatus they are using, it's working. And now we have Falar and Balogun. It is etched in stone. Uh, he has filed the paperwork. He'll be available for the June tournaments, the Nations League. The Nations League, which starts on uh, June the 15th, that game against Mexico, which I jokingly tweeted, imagine Falar and Balogun scoring the winning goal in that game. It's not so far-fetched. The Gold Cup, which starts... Uh, what a couple of weeks or about nine days after that. So we're going to see him. We're going to see him really soon. And we'll get an idea, uh, an early indication. I know a lot of people are putting a desired starting 11s for 2026. You can't do that. You can't do that. This is a work in progress. You can't just say Chris Richards or Weston McKinney or Gio Reyna are going to be in that starting 11. Because so much is going to happen from now until 2026. We're developing players at an incredible rate. We have our under 20s now there that I think are going to do us really proud. We have players we haven't even identified. They're going to come to the surface and get a spot for that World Cup. This is We have now a player pool that's as deep and talented as it's ever been. Doesn't mean it's results driven yet. But just when you look at options that are everywhere, the U.S. has got it. And that pool's getting bigger and bigger. I promise you, the development still has a lot to go in this country, but the development is seeing less and less players slip through the cracks. The development is identifying players and getting them on a pathway. And as I said on my podcast to Jonathan Tannenwald, young athletic Americans are now looking at soccer as a viable pathway to making a lot of money. They can be professional very early. They could be 16, 17, 18 in an academy over in Europe on the precipice of making big, big bucks. Great athletes from the United States are going to find that way. So don't etch it in pen for 2026. I don't think any of those positions are locked in. I would like to see a lot of the positions because from 22 to 26 to have a group that's played together is very valuable, but don't lock it in. Don't lock Balogun in. I think this is going to light a fire on R Ricardo Pepe. I think the striker pecking order is Balogun 1, Pepe 2, Josh Sargent 3, Haji Wright 4. The other guys have kind of fallen off the back wheel, but still in the mix, and maybe a new one will emerge. But, but Pepe, who's picked up an injury, had a great back end of the season. He's scoring goals again. He's going to want that job. And if he has what he says he has, we could have a, 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 an angry, hungry striker and better options. So that's all very exciting. But Balogun will certainly lead the way. So going back to credit, Greg Berhalter, yes, Anthony Hudson. I mean, he nailed Zendejas. Anthony Hudson's not going to be the national team coach. And look, we have, a, we have a new sporting director. We have another guy underneath there, Noguchi Onyewu, to help this transition. The U.S. soccer seems like they're figuring it out. I know it's not going to be perfect, but there's a lot of evidence there that are figuring it out. But Anthony Hudson is going to get a job somewhere else because of this. And I think deep down inside, that's what he wants. I don't know if he wants to be the head coach of the men's national team. But I think he knows that he probably doesn't have everything you need in place to, uh, to, be the best, to, to beat out better candidates, of which we are anticipating top-tier candidates out there, Jesse Marsh, who's the, the front-runner, to emerge. 
and many international ones, we shall see. I mean, everyone's, it's on the radar and the Balogun news just helps that percolate. Uh, I want to talk about what Balogun said because as we're talking about Anthony Hudson, he, he said something I thought was interesting because with the situation with Balogun, you say, is he just coming here because he wants to play or is he coming here because he identifies as American? He was born in Brooklyn. He has family in New York still. He left at the age of two. That's uh, American enough for me. <laughs> but Anthony Hudson said, it's clear he values his U.S. roots. And to hear him talk about it, and he, he mentioned watching the Olympics and getting inspired by great track athletes and athletes in the Olympic Games that were wearing the red, white, and blue. So he identified with that. It's easy to identify with that. Um, I grew up in Australia and I was like 12 years old, but I was born in the United States. When I was in Australia from like four years old to 12, I was American. <laughs> you connect to where you were born because that always is going to, that's always going to keep you connected. Regardless of you even set foot in that place, you could always say you were born there. So I, he's saying the right things and I think Balogun's saying it, but Hunt isn't saying it as well. So I'm, I'm convinced. We'll get to what Balligan had said here in a moment. Uh, well, I shall let's let's talk about something he said because as I get back to giving credit, Berhalter, Hudson, whoever in the players reached out to Balligan, we know several did and sold them on this program. They all helped out, but all of you, all of you did the job. When this first time we saw Balligan feet hit the ground in Florida, where this really occurred, when he was in Orlando and Tampa. Everyone was involved in social media. People were saying, come here, we want you. Well, Balogun mentioned in his address on U.S. soccer that he heard that. And he felt the appreciation from everyone and felt the warmth and felt how everyone wanted to come here. Th something he wasn't feeling from England probably. He noticed it. I noticed it. So pat yourself on the back because I guarantee you that was not a minor detail here. It's amazing what can happen when you're felt wanted. You will swear allegiance to those people. Go, these people get me. Balogun felt that. He said it. How could he have missed it? We had him as the number one trending or number two trending topic on Twitter. Nationwide. So people who knew about him were tweeting about him. People who didn't know were curious about him. People noticed. I've gotten like three phone calls or uh, emails to appear on shows tomorrow on different national media shows to talk about this. They don't know about him, but they are curious. He's feeling all of that. So U.S. soccer, Twitter, social media, all the accounts. You did good. I'm proud of you. See what we can do when we put our heads together. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I believe that swayed him. I truly believe it did because he pointed it out immediately. All right, so we continue on here. And what did he say about the United States? He says he came together with his family to make the decision. And he added this line, representing the United States means a lot more than people will know. That little sentence at the end tells you so much. Tells you how he has compartmentalized his Americanism and maybe hasn't been able to show it. He says he's an English kid. His friends are in England. He grew up in England. But being American, I bet you when people made fun of Americans, it bothered him. Now it's going to really bother him because he's reconnecting. You can't fake that. I don't think he's coming here to play. I'm he is coming here because he's feeling a major connection. And that is fantastic for all of us. So bring it on. Again, you, you give him the keys, but you keep an eye on him to make sure he's not driving crazy. And you say, I'll take those keys right back out of you, son. But he is the number one. He's 21. Scored those goals at, uh, in the French League at Rennes. Uh, he is reported to, his loan there has ended. He's with Arsenal, the Arsenal Academy. How many Arsenal Academy players do we have in our system? There's a lot of big clubs that want his signing, but you're talking about a 40 million plus transfer fee for him. How many players? 40 million at least. I mean, we had Christian Pulisic who exceeded that, but that's, you know, snug into two. And Pulisic's not worth that now. 60 million. It's, it's a great day. We, we, we can keep adding center backs and central midfielders and fullbacks. We still need a lot of help in, those, in certain positions. But number nine was the key. 
And now we have a guy, and it, if he is not the guy, I get the feeling that he is going to energize others to try and take that with him. We have under 20 guys that are playing in number 10 in MLS that are really excited. We have rumors of players going everywhere. We hit a low point, you know, with the players performing and what happened with the scandal. We hit a low point. Now we're going to start seeing where we're going, but we feel very well equipped. This is the best news since the World Cup was going on, and uh, it, it, it occurred organically, and it occurred with everyone chipping in. We'll talk much more about Falar and Balogun. I am thrilled. Well done, America. We got our guy. He is the real deal, Holyfield, and let's welcome in, and hopefully he scores some goals, because Gonka Kaf's going to be really interesting. USA plays Mexico in that Nations League semifinal. Mexico is laboring, but they'll be back. They'll be back. You think of all these great players scoring goals. Santi Jimenez won a trophy with Feyenoord. He scored a ton of goals. Balogun, uh, Jonathan David, who uh, is the Canada's number one striker, competing for Balogun with the, for the best striker in the region. Uh, I'm not ready to or privy to say who I think is better. Canada's much better, but you know Canada doesn't have great defending. We do. If it all falls into place. Conquer Calf shall be ours in 2026.